Account groups contain subgroups or specific account numbers that will be associated with an account pyramid to provide financial detail when reporting. When defining account groups, you start building from the bottom of the pyramid, which is the most detailed level, to the top, which is the most summary level. Groups are created and associated with specific account pyramids. And each pyramid has a total root group, which is the top most level that is used when referencing the accounting pyramid for reporting. Let's take a look at building account groups and linking them to account pyramids. To enter account groups into your system, you'll select the account groups function under the common data menu. You then have to select the pyramid that you want to associate the groups with. In the right hand panel under the pyramids, select the pyramid that you just created. I'll create the general expense pyramid. Next, I need to add my groups. I'm going to create a group for business expenses that will be associated with my pyramid. Click New in the right-hand panel and enter a code. It can be up to 10 characters in length. And then enter a description. And then you can enter a short description if you choose. And then you enter the classification. This is the classification associated with the majority of the accounts entered in this particular group. I'm entering expenses, so mine will be an expense 7. Next comes the definition level. The definition level is used when you are nesting groups and subgroups. Every subgroup of a group needs to be a higher definition level than its parent. So if group a is going to be a subgroup of group B, group A must have a higher definition level than group B. This group is going to be a subset of the total group, and the total group has a definition level of 10, so this group's definition level must be 11 or higher. You can use definition levels 1 through 98. 99 is reserved for the bottom level of the pyramid, which are your account numbers. I'm going to make mine definition level 20. Next, we define the print row. The print row is used to order the groups of the same level when they are used in either the analytical balance inquiry or in the FDE for printing purposes. I'll make my print row 10. Next, we assign either a subgroup or account. Since I don't have any subgroups that I want to put into this group, I am going to enter in general business expenses. So I'll add my advertising account, my bank charges, my dues, my utilities, and my rent. And then I'll go ahead and click Create. And notice it created my account group. Now, if I want to create an account group that has other account groups in it or subgroups, I'll go ahead and click New in the right-hand panel. And then I'll enter an HR group for my HR expenses. I'll give it a code. And then I'll enter in a description. And then I can give it a short description. And once again, I enter my classification, which are expenses, so I know it's 7. This group, I'm going to make 15, as it will fall into my total group, which is 10, but it will also contain the groups of my employee expenses and my payroll expenses, which happen to be definition level 20. My print row will be 10 and then I'll come in and put my subgroups. And I'm going to select my employee subgroup and my payroll subgroup. And the reason I can select these two subgroups is because their definition level is 20, which is larger than 15, which is the definition level of my HR group. And then I go ahead and click Create. Now, 
Once I have all of the account groups that I want into my pyramid, I need to link those groups with my total or my root group. So I'm going to select my total group in the left hand panel and then I'm going to come down and I'm going to enter in my subgroups that I want associated. In this case it's going to be my HR expense group and my business expense group which is my BUS. I can also associate an account. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my depreciation account and if I don't know it I can always look it up. Once I have my subgroups and my accounts set in my total account, I go ahead and click Save. Now to see my pyramid, I need to leave the account groups and go back into the account pyramids function. And now when I look at my general expense, I can see my full pyramid. If I need to make any changes, I can click on either an account or a group and I can make changes, I can delete, I can edit, or I can even pop back over to my groups function. And then I can come back out. To use an account pyramid, I'll either use them in my dimension balance inquiry or my financial data extraction. I have those memorized so I can jump right to those programs. If I go ahead and look at my first data extraction, notice on any of my lines, if I select my report, I'll just go ahead and look at my income statement. And I happen to look at a formula. Notice in my formula wizard, I can select general accounting and then I can come down and select the type of extraction, a pyramid, and I could go ahead and select my expense pyramid that I just created. In this lesson, you have learned that once an account pyramid has been created, you need to create account groups and associate them with a pyramid. Groups can contain specific accounts or other subgroups. And finally, the pyramid is referenced by the root when being used in reporting situations.